Business owners, executives, and entrepreneurs, get your pen and paper ready and tune in Sundays at 1 p.m. for Evolution Strategies, business sustainability and growth simplified. You must evolve to meet the challenges of today's marketplace. This is the only show in the Philly metro area that walks you step-by-step through success factors that make or break your brand. Want some free advice? Call in Sundays at 1 p.m. to talk to your host, Carolyn Lighty, and a panel of experts for Evolution Strategies, business sustainability and growth simplified. Good day. I'm your host, Carolyn Lighty. Welcome to our show. I was reading a recent article from Forbes magazine, and it talked about how small businesses are falling behind their larger competitors. Some of them are stuck in the 20th century and afraid to change the way they've always done things, and others simply lack the resources needed to take advantage of the often confusing and scary new world of media and marketing. Today, it's truly survival of the digital fittest. If you are a small business owner, it's incredibly important to evolve to meet the needs of your customers. If you're not in front of your customers on a daily basis, on the mobile devices they carry everywhere they go, then you're simply not a top-of-mind consideration when they're ready to buy your products. Now, having said all of that, there are, of course, other challenges faced by business owners and entrepreneurs as they fight to stay alive in a slow economy and in the face of other obstacles that are beyond their control. In addition to business owners taking stock and investing in their own growth and sustainability, some of these challenges require the attention and involvement of our civic organizations as well as city and state government. Joining me today to discuss best practices in downtown small business development are guests from the Delaware Economic Development Office. I have with me Diane Laird, State Coordinator, Downtown Delaware. Welcome, Diane. Thank you very much. It's good to be here, Carolyn. And also Ken Anderson, also with the Delaware Economic Development Office and Director of Entrepreneurial and Small Business Development. Welcome, Ken. Hi, Carol. Thanks for the opportunity to be here. Absolutely. So I like to start the show so that everybody kind of gets to know who you are, what you do, where you came from, why you care. (laughs) Why do you care so much about small businesses uh, and helping to develop our economic centers? So let's start with Diane. Ladies first. Well, thank you. Um, I came into downtown revitalization actually through uh, going back to school at the University of Delaware in 1998. I went back for historic preservation and I had an internship with the Delaware Economic Development Office and specifically the Main Street program of downtown revitalization. Mm -hmm. And I've been uh, working there for 15 years overseeing technical services and uh, best practices in downtown revitalization. Well, that's why this topic is perfect then for you, huh? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And you've li- you live in this area. Where do you do? You live in Delaware. I live in Middletown, Delaware. Okay. And, uh, but I could be found anywhere, <laughs> any downtown throughout the state uh, on any given day. That's perfect. And Ken, tell us a little about yourself. Well, I'm Ken Anderson, and I live in Clayton, Delaware. I say Clayton. Boost <laughs> it up a little bit. <laughs> Clayton. I came uh, to the Delaware Economic Development Office through our business. My wife and I own Goins Williams and Associates, and we had consulting contracts for OMB and DITO. Oh, and we okay. went through some organizational development and made a, a number of recommendations organizationally for the Delaware Economic Development Office. And one of the things we found that this position that I'm currently in was vacant. Uh-huh. Long story short, I advocated my role from our business applied for this position like everybody else, got the position, expected only to be here for four or six months, and six years later, wow. I'm here. So that's how I got it. Well, that's a testament to the fact that you must be getting some things done. We're having fun. <laughs> we really are. Now, you left your wife, though, and she's doing the business herself. What's going on with no, that? No, she's fully capable. She has a bunch of 1099 uh, independent consultants okay. that support her. Um, she's not mad at me anymore, so okay. it's all good. All right, because I could feel a little, you know, <laughs> I don't know. Attention. Yeah, a little tension in the home on that one, um, especially when you would turn the key in your ignition and decide to drive away <laughs> while she's dealing with I, issues. I, I check the underside of my car every time. <laughs> That's great. So, Diane, give me a little idea of the mission of the Delaware Economic Development Office, or DITO, as folks like to re- refer to it as. Well, very, very briefly, DITO is about bringing jobs and businesses to the state. And uh, Main Street specifically is, is focused on, on downtown. So we're about entrepreneurial development, innovation for business owners in, in downtowns. And 
uh, bringing the assets of the downtown to to, to fruition. So mm-hmm. that shoppers, visitors, tourists, and people that work in the downtown can enjoy those environments. Well, I think I told you as uh, uh, before we went on air, you know, I was here uh, 15 years ago, 15, 16 years ago. And this downtown area, the Loma District, that's what, you know, what they're calling it, um, was not necessarily the, the most desirable place to, to walk, mm-hmm. to shop, to live. And now I come back and I see this miraculous transformation. And, and that's kind of one thing that got me going. I got really excited about it. I moved downtown. Um, my daughter and I had moved up from downtown Miami. Now, there is a difference because I don't have the pretty palm trees and the beautiful water, but at least, <laughs> but at least, but it's very, yeah, oh my gosh, it's beautiful. But, um, so I was just really excited about that and wanted to see what I could do to get involved in terms of helping the businesses because I did talk to quite a few of them. And, the, you know, while you have those that have been around for a while, uh, one of the guys, um, his shop has been there for like over 30 years. Um, and he was here, actually, when I was here uh, here before. But he, you can hear the frustration in their voices in terms of, you know, am I going to make it? Is this really, you know, I'm glad to see what's been done. But I still need to see more in order to be, get the foot traffic and get people to actually come down and have it really impact my bottom line. So um, it's kind of like six in one hand, you know, half a dozen in the other, because they understand the importance of marketing and the things that they should do to invest in their businesses to bring uh, people in but then they don't have the money to do it because they're not making any money right now. So um, that's why you guys are super and you're here to solve all those problems, right? Right. Well, downtown revitalization is it's a slow and incremental process. Uh, we celebrate small wins, and at the same time, we develop long-term goals. So some of the smaller wins perhaps would be banners or uh, facade improvements, one facade improvement at a time. Mm-hmm. Uh, a new business recruited that is a, a sustainable type of a business, an appropriate business for the downtown. Mm-hmm. The long-term wins are streets and blocks fully uh, with facade improvements, aesthetic designs, good businesses, thriving businesses. And I think um, in the last six or eight years uh, specifically, you can see uh, significant improvements with the addition of the Queen Theater here in in downtown, Mm -hmm. Uh, many facade improvements, uh, uh, quite a number of new restaurants, the Loma District with full facelift and a lot of reinvestment uh, in the properties downtown. Mm -hmm. And you also have several organizations, partnering organizations that are uh, overseeing these efforts, are guiding these efforts. You have the Main Street program within Downtown Visions, Mm -hmm. uh, Wilmington Renaissance. The city has always been a partner. We at the state are there to support all the the efforts and you certainly don't want to leave out the private investors who are who are investing in these buildings and making these improvements and taking a chance with their businesses in the downtown uh, creating one win at a time. That's great. Well obviously it's, it's you know I don't like to continue to use that term it takes a village but clearly in order to make all of this happen even to get it to the point where it is today um, it took the efforts of an awful lot of people um, coming from different areas of expertise in order to make it happen. Um, from a small business standpoint, Ken, um, what are there? Are there some successes you can talk about as it relates to how you see this impacting the small businesses that are downtown now? Well, I kind of look at all of our programs and how they have impacted all small businesses within the state, okay. including our downtowns. And you know, there's one report that. Uh, was available to me when I got here in 2007, Mm -hmm. and it was the 2007 New Economy Index put out by the Kauffman Foundation. Mm -hmm. And one of the areas that are core responsibilities for me is entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. And when I looked at where we rank throughout the country in this one indicator called entrepreneurship, Mm -hmm. we were ranked number 50, number 50 in the country. And we're we're never going to rank really highly in that category just because of our population and the way they measure it. Mm -hmm. But I knew we were better than that. And I knew that indicator was wrong. But that being said, we launched a number of programs just to help small businesses grow, create Mm -hmm. some energy around entrepreneurship, Mm -hmm. increase the capacity of our existing small businesses, Mm -hmm. businesses in the downtowns and businesses that weren't on downtown Main Street Mm -hmm. because our real goal overall at the Delaware Economic Development Office is for small business to succeed, to grow, to create jobs for all of our citizens. And they do that when they have the tools to become successful. Mm -hmm. So we launched a number of initiatives. We started holding 
um, first time at Delaware Economic Development Office, Governor's Entrepreneurial Business Conference. Mm -hmm. We did four of those, which tapped into all the small business and entrepreneurs throughout the state. Mm -hmm. We established uh, training centered around entrepreneurs. We started doing Emerging Technology Center, mm -hmm. Secrets of Success seminars. Mm -hmm. um, we brought in various programs. We started to target on minority women, veteran-owned businesses, mm -hmm. to help increase capacity and bring opportunities for success within that targeted group. And all of those initiatives affect small businesses, but really uniquely, we believe, affect the small businesses in our downtown. So we're pleased with where we are. There's a lot more to do in that area, mm -hmm. but we've made some progress. That's really good. And these events that you've mentioned, all of these programs, are they free or are there, is there a fee involved or are they, does, is it varied? We host programs that most other agencies in, in, in the state would have to charge really significant fees for. We have charged marginal fees for some of our conferences, mm -hmm. but we have offered many, many programs such as the uh, uh, ETC Secrets of Success Seminar where we brought in notable entrepreneurs to talk to our business audience right. with a real serious breakfast at places like the hotel uh -huh. DuPont, Very nice. and uh, the Wilmington Club mm -hmm. and where those entrepreneurs just talked about um, what it took for them to be successful and w they told us the good and the bad and the ugly stories about yeah. Yeah. what it took to be successful and the breakfast was totally free okay we did about six of those totally packed out in places like the hotel DuPont, Gold Room. So we have done fee okay. and no fee programs, and they have proved to be very uh, very well received by our marketplace. And so um, so your participation in those events was was top-notch. I mean, it was, it was, as you say, sold out. You didn't have to really pull teeth to get folks to come and learn. Uh, not, not, not for the ETC Secrets of Success seminars. <laughs> Hotel DuPont, Gold Room, if you well, haven't that's been it. there. No, I haven't that's been nice, there, but I nice guess. Place. Wilmington <laughs> so they're Club, get there. Yeah. private club where many, right. many citizens haven't even been in. Right. And we held that's those good. events there just to expose entrepreneurs to what can be if they find a way to be successful in their business. Absolutely. Do you, what about mentoring, business mentoring? Are you are you involved with any programs related to that? We do a business mentoring program associated with our initiatives. And Diane, you should talk about the Milford uh, business mentoring program. That's, an, that's a model of some of the things we've done. Okay. Yeah, that was an exciting program. Uh, we were blessed with a couple of AmeriCorps VISTA uh, volunteers uh, at DITO over the past several years, and one of them developed an initiative called the Milford Business Mentoring Program. And that was an opportunity to address goals of VISTA, which are to uh, uh, help the underserved, and DITO, which is business development. Mm -hmm. And uh, she, she developed this program with students to be uh, shadowing working business owners of downtown businesses. Mm -hmm. And they were high school students. And we had about 18 graduate over a two-year time period. And uh, it was a terrific opportunity for them not only to shadow these business owners in their places of business, uh, but also to learn from partners in, in our field, uh, from the SBA or the YWCA Center for Women's Entrepreneurship, and hear about uh, their their experiences as entrepreneurs or with entrepreneurs. What is it like to write a business plan? What What is it like to uh, be up all night wondering about how you're going to pay the bills? <laughs> yeah. but that, that was an excellent partnershiping of the Delaware Mentoring Council for grants, uh, the Delaware Department of Education to ensure we're working within their standards, and uh, with the state, with, with the city of Milford, and also with downtown Milford Incorporated, which is the Main Street program there. And, and, you know, the win is not only to encourage new entrepreneurs, but it's also to expose them to the principles that caused one of them to say, I don't want to be an entrepreneur. Uh, interesting. And that was just yeah. as important, we felt, as, as the, what we would consider a win. That's interesting because you're showing options. You're giving them different options because college or technical school may not be it. Um, you know, my daughter is now going to DCAD, and this is just a two-year school. She'll have to decide what happens after that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, um, the fact that she's able to already begin to experience being in business because she gets commissioned to do different art pieces and things like that. Right. Um, and, it, and if yeah. that's local, mm -hmm. that's also in a way to encourage them to stay yeah. in the downtown or return to the downtown yeah. and to develop a business there later that's on. That's great. That's mm -hmm. interesting. And then entrepreneurship as, as an alternative to unemployment is also very important, wouldn't you say? Well, the, the game has changed significantly mm -hmm. in terms of the cost of going to college, 
the fact that we're in a new economy where there's new job skill requirements for for all of us. Mm -hmm. Um, And and I would say that some colleges just aren't preparing their graduates for these new economy skills that are required. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of initiatives centered around communicating to the marketplace about the reality of the possibility of being an entrepreneur or at least uh, taking a look at the alternative to college or an alternative to a regular J-O-B by Mm -hmm. having your own business. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is a real option in today's marketplace. And the opportunities uh, to be a business owner are more prevalent than ever before. I think Mm -hmm. the playing field has been leveled a little bit, Mm -hmm. unfortunately, by a challenging economy. Um, The digital economy has opened up opportunities for every average Joe to be an entrepreneur. If you have access to a laptop, Mm -hmm. you can be in business. And that wasn't true maybe 10 or 15 years ago. So entrepreneurship is a reality, even from those of us that don't come from an entrepreneurial background. Mm -hmm. There's a real opportunity to be in business for yourself, to go to college, to do both of those, unlike never before in our history. Yeah, that's true. Did you want to add anything to that, Diane? Well, just that one of our initiatives over the last several years has been e-commerce training. And that has been free of charge with good food. That's great. <laughs> uh, we held it re- recently at uh, Del Tech Community College, uh, and we've held it at DSU as well. And we've typically taken in 25 to 30 people, capped out a-, a classroom, and had we've expanded it from one instructor over four days to mm-hmm. uh, probably 15 instructors and practicing uh, entrepreneurs that are using uh, internet technology to uh, to promote their business and to to run their business actually wow. and that's been significant because again in the digital economy you need to have access to not only technology but you have the opportunity to work with a global marketplace absolutely and, and uh, we want to be sure that these people have the tools to do that wow that's that's amazing you know just to hear of those and it sounds like there's an awful lot of success stories that have come out of that and it's grown you you started it and now you have to have more instructors and and the other benefit is that uh since we have a variety of of these kinds of training opportunities and networking events we find that uh these people will show up to various ones and they're they're getting the full benefit and we had just one recently uh, has been a selectee to our pop-up program, and she's actually opening her business in a storefront in downtown Milford. She's actually up and running right now. She didn't That's need great. to be until October 1st. But and, and what kind of business? She's a Milford Massage Yoga okay. and, and Wellness, and she's been working out of her home mm-hmm. and uh, has found it kind of impossible to expand there, partly because of the services she provides, and it is out of, out of a home, mm-hmm. even though it's commercially set up. Uh, but also because she simply needed more room. Mm-hmm. And so she's now housed in uh, in a, a commercial setting on Northeast Front Street in Milford, and uh, she's already earned enough to pay January's rent. Wow. After three months free rent is over. That's wonderful. She's and that's crazy. that's definitely what you want to hear. Well, that leads us into pop-up, so why don't we talk a little bit more sure. about that. What are the criteria for getting involved with that? Uh, Project Pop-Up is uh, an initiative of the Delaware Economic Development Office, and, and we engage uh, towns statewide uh, to, to come up with a property that's vacant in their downtown, to engage a property owner that's willing to offer three months free rent, and a, uh, a downtown that has a contact person that will pick up the phone when I call there so <laughs> to be on site to yeah. coordinate the details mm-hmm. of this kind of an initiative. And then we put a call out for entries. This year we received uh, 40 applications from business owners who would like to be considered for a pop-up store. And we have found that the most successful ones are already working either outside of their home or have have revenue coming in. Mm -hmm. Is there a level of revenue that you're looking for, Mm -hmm. a number of of clients or customers that you're looking to see that they've established themselves? specifically because each property has a different rent level and mm-hmm. different challenges. Some have less foot traffic or, or more vehicular traffic, uh, and some are higher rent uh, or have, you know, th- there's specifics to, to the spaces. But, mm-hmm. no, we want to we know that they have a good understanding not only of their business but how to run a business and see that there is some revenue being generated and uh, that they have a certain number of Facebook clients or an mm-hmm. established clientele because we don't want to set them up 
to fail. Right, exactly. We want really to see them continue into a, a longer term lease. And so that that is more likely with somebody who also already has an established business. With uh, with these being um, free, rent free for the three first three months, there's no build out. I would think there's no main uh, major build out of no, the space. No, there's no major build outs. Pretty much, their spaces that are that are ready to go. Mm -hmm. We offer downtown Delaware offers five hundred dollars reimbursable towards fixing some ceiling tiles or fixing the floor or getting new light bulbs or electrical wiring in. Mm -hmm. uh, but no, they're generally places that don't need much fit out. Mm -hmm. um, but we have found that, that the successful candidates want a long-term lease because they're ready to invest. They're ready at into that point. their own painting, mm -hmm. rewiring. We have a computer store, computers fixed today going into Dover. And he's already made investments, uh, signage and in rewiring and that kind of thing. So um, we're talking mostly retail, even though the mas well, massage is still considered. Yeah, retail retail. And service. Yeah. Actually, Ken mm -hmm. has been uh, coaching. He's uh, part of the uh, opportunity is not only to get the space, but to get a coach that will that will help prioritize mm -hmm. with the selectees what they need to do next, how to get the marketing and promotions uh, in the right in the right direction, mm -hmm. and get financing uh, in order, get their business plan tweaked. To, uh, current I was going to ask. So they do have to have a business plan. Well, they need at least the basis of one. But Ken really uh, works with them specifically once they're selected. He can tell you. Okay. About that. So Ken, tell me more about the rest of that process. They do they come prepared with a business plan, or um, do you help them write one or develop those action items that they need to do to put together? What do you as part of our assessment process, we're really looking for some kind of business plan concept. This is really not a program where you, you are first figuring out your business. Uh, the, the, the best profile businesses are those businesses that are generating some revenue, mm -hmm. have some kind of business concept. Mm -hmm. And when we select them for the pop-up program, that, that's a real criteria that we look for. Mm -hmm. If they don't, we do bring them to the process of enhancing their business plan. We have a multitude of state small business resources, the SBTDC, SCORE, the SBA, um, the YWCA Center for Women's Entrepreneurship, that all are mostly free resources to enhance those business plans if need be. Mm -hmm. But we're really trying to put them in the best position from a business standpoint and financially that when they get through the first three uh, months of free rent, that they're able to go right into a full lease and be able to uh, accommodate that lease without uh, marginalizing other uh, opportunity for business success. So give me an idea of some of the more successful pop-ups in term, you know, because I know there were a few here on Market Street. I don't know if they just went somewhere where else to open their businesses or whatever, but I did see a few when I first came back. Why don't you talk a little bit about uh, Amber's? Sure. Uh, well, last year we had three pop-up uh, businesses open. Mm -hmm. One was Yo-Yo Joe's in Wilmington, but he chose to stay just for the three months. Okay. Uh, but our other two very successful pop-ups last year were in, in Middletown and Milford. Both were photography-based business, um, personal portraits and, and young children, family-type mm -hmm. portraits, um, mm -hmm. but well done. And uh, our Middletown, Amber Shader, the photographer, also had a retail aspect to her business that was uh, fi fine, fine clothing for toddlers and oh, babies, okay. uh, kind of a baby boutique along with her photography. And she actually just won Best of uh, uh, Northern Delaware Baby Boutique for, for Delaware Today. Oh, wow. So that she's That's a great. real poster child for a successful pop-up. Uh, this year, and so we didn't have a long-term win in Wilmington, mm -hmm. uh, but it did meet the original goal for the program, which mm -hmm. is to light up an empty building and give an entrepreneur an opportunity. Mm -hmm. Do you think there are specific, uh, this is kind of rhetorical, but let's go with it anyway. You know, there are different challenges to being in downtown Wilmington than there are in being Wil in uh, Middletown. Yeah. So how, what impact do you think some of those challenges had on whether or not he was able to sustain the business there or even desire to? Well, I think his his business was good for the space, mm -hmm. the size of the space. Um, but I'm I'm not sure the economy. I'm not sure he could withstand uh, the toy business beyond yeah. Christmas or at high times with his supply of. of toys. And it was unique. I remember seeing it mm -hmm. when it when it was there, um, and it was very unique kinds of toys and things like that. So he would have had to create kind of a, a brand awareness and a destination type 
draw in, I think in order to begin to see the traffic that he would need? I, I think the city of Wilmington had little to do really about. Welcome to Wilmington, Delaware. At Preservation Initiatives, we bring beautiful lofts to you. The recently renovated lofts at 400 Market Street are a must-see, a part of registered National Historic District. Featuring spacious floor plans, custom glass windows, solid surface countertops, stainless steel appliances, custom lighting, wood flooring, large closets, pocket doors, sunny interiors, high ceilings plus beautifully detailed trim molding. Enjoy the sights, sounds and tastes of Market Street. Just a short walk from the Wilmington Riverfront, featuring family-friendly places to enjoy, with plenty of restaurants, entertainment and other small town conveniences. Wilmington, Delaware in the middle of it all. Reserve today. Preservation initiatives, urban revitalization through historic preservation. Listening to WFAI 1510 AM. Welcome back to this week's edition of Evolution Strategies, Business, Sustainability, and Growth Simplified. If you're just joining us, get your pen and paper ready for more free advice from Carolyn Lighty and her guests. Preservation Initiatives is a wonderful, wonderful gem that we have here in the city of Wilmington. Don McGinley, its founder, has been developing historic properties since 1979. He's had properties in Boston, Miami, Philly, and now Wilmington. If you want to contact Preservation Initiatives in reference to any of the residential or commercial properties, please call them at 302-543-7565. That's 302-543-7565. His ability to continue. Mm-hmm. I mean, his industry was going through metamorphosis mm-hmm. even before he came to the city of Wilmington. Mm-hmm. I think he really wanted to see if there was an opportunity to gain traction in the city mm-hmm. that really defied what he was experiencing at his other location. The reality is that marketplace was changing so dramatically, mm-hmm. and I don't know whether any location in, in this area would have made a difference at, at that point. That's an interesting point. Yeah, the other aspect about Wilmington Properties, and uh, Bettini Pollen's been very gracious to offer up their pro- several of their properties, uh, and the, the, cons- the challenge with them really is that they're large properties. Uh, for a, a generally bit smaller startup, uh, they don't need that much space and mm-hmm. certainly can't withstand the, the rent that could come after the three months okay. uh, of free rent. So uh, we have to kind of devise a, maybe a different plan for the city of Wilmington because, because of those challenges. Mm-hmm. They've, been, they've been gracious to provide, and Don McGinley of Preservation Initiatives has also provided in the past pop-up spaces, and we continue to work with him uh, with similar incentives of uh, three months free rent in mm-hmm. the spirit of that sounds great. So with the, the marketplace itself, and I'm saying when I say the market, I mean in the entire Delaware market, where would you say you're finding the most success right now? In pop-up? Mm-hmm. Uh, well, the rural areas. Mm-hmm. We, we've got wins in uh, Middletown at this point from last year. We have a new business in, in Milford, the, the massage and yoga. Mm-hmm. We have two in Milton, one in Dover, and one in Smyrna. So it's interesting. Areas, can, can when I, I was here 16 years ago, those were really considered rural areas. But I understand they're growing, and awful. I haven't been down, but I hear that they're growing phenomenally. Well, you got you got somebody on your show today that actually lives in Clayton. Remember, I said that <laughs> earlier, and, and that is really Smyrna. And I can tell you, Kent County is the fastest growing county in the state, just growing up slightly faster than Sussex County. Wow. And there's a lot of small business activity there. There's a lot of entrepreneurs there. I live in a new development, mm-hmm. and most of the license plates over the last year are from New York, Pennsylvania, wow. and New Jersey. If people haven't been to Kent County, wow. Sussex County, in the last five years, or they grew up in Clayton and Smyrna, mm-hmm. they won't believe what's going on in terms of small business development 
and entrepreneurial uh, activity. That's interesting because, and when you, yeah, when you think about that, th those areas, I'm going to go back again to those 16 years ago. You're, you want your resources and services to be local. You don't want to have to drive, you know, a half hour to get to your favorite type of coffee shop, say. Um, so the fact that it's growing um, like that, I think that that's a testament to a real um, decision to make a difference and, and to change that environment so that it is more appealing. Yeah, we're very excited about all the pop-ups, but one specific one going into Smyrna, which is a small town, but mm -hmm. uh, the population in the surrounding area is growing significantly, and this is a uh, home decor and custom window treatment uh, shop, and she'll have fine accessories for the home, custom window treatments for commercial and residential purposes, and as we looked at her location in the downtown, uh, it's next to a high-end consignment shop and, and uh, Sayers Jewelers. Yeah, and see. so there's a yeah. shared market there, mm -hmm. and in the surrounding neighborhoods, uh, the clientele will support that, we believe. Well, look, that gets back to what the location, location, location. Mm -hmm. And in that instance, because of the type of business she selected, a lot of times entrepreneurs will, are not really in tune with what the market will bear or is interested in or will support. Um, but if you have real estate that's growing in the area, then a home decor place makes sense. But you might not open a, I don't know, give me something that's off the, off the way here. I don't know, an art shop or something. I don't know. And, and that actually may be all right as well because we have the Artorama that just opened mm -hmm. here, Jerry's. Um, but I, it just really depends on the community. I think a lot of times our entrepreneurs are not thinking about those factors, you know, when they're starting a business. Well, I was just going to say from, a, from an economic development uh, standpoint, mm -hmm. the success of your real, rural communities really dictate the possibilities for the rest of the state. Interesting. If you can get your rural communities moving in the right direction, get growth in businesses and entrepreneurship, mm -hmm. that's just going to have overlapping results for the rest of the state. So really excited what's happening in, in, in those communities right now. And what I uh, thought, as you said, give us an example of a business that couldn't or may not succeed. Uh, what I think and what we talk about a lot is uh, the fact that businesses can't rely on foot traffic anymore they really have to have that internet presence mm -hmm. not only for the marketing but for the sales of their products That's so right. we we and that gives time for the downtowns as they're revitalizing it kind of buys time that's exactly so, what I said when I met with about a half dozen of the businesses you know who were complaining about foot traffic I said well do you have a website mm -hmm. and do you sell your products over the web yeah. oh no I'm old school well <laughs> then then you're going to stay where you are. You know, it's unfortunate. Or if you, you might not really stay where you are, you may end up not right. being there anymore because you have to look at the additional additional revenue streams and how to tap into that. Um, you know, mobile technology now, what is it, 2.1 million, you know, mobile devices are out there and and every no one leaves home without it you know it becomes the new the new uh, communications device that's where they're making their purchases they're doing whatever searching they're doing and they really need to look at becoming digitally fit that's what I like to call it I mean this is a huge issue we could spend the whole show just talking, talking about, about this, that yeah but this is the real meter that differentiates businesses today that's right I mean you can have a successful small business that's doing um, generating revenue in your local community and you'll hire a couple people and you may do okay but the marketplace is, is changing dramatically I mean a digital economy this new economy you have people in third world countries that maybe don't even have sophisticated uh, 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 living conditions right. but they have access to a laptop That's down right. in the village down the road they can mm -hmm. get on a laptop You're right. and theoretically they can compete with you under those conditions while you sit in your nice comfortable creature comforts yeah. right here in Delaware yeah. that's the marketplace and it's a game changer it's leveled the playing field but it's forced traditional entrepreneurs to adapt mm -hmm. in order to stay competitive evolution evolution strategies that's hence the reason for the show because trying to get people to understand that the workshops that we've given live, um, you could see the light bulbs going on when we talk about integrating text messaging, email marketing, you know, and all of those other factors. And, and then, of course, your regular, you know, search related advertising and all of that, which can be very expensive. But now they're coming out with so many lower cost opportunities for small businesses. You can spend less than three hundred dollars a month and reach, you know, 
a couple hundred thousand number of people, at least in your local area. If you only wanted to focus on local, you could reach a couple hundred thousand local people and then develop relationships, get them to become your customers, send them promotions via text messaging. And there are programs out there that can do that very, very cost effectively and keep them coming back. Because, you know, I had an interesting story. One of the women in, in downtown, she has a gift shop that recently opened up. I've met with her a couple of times. I feel so bad for her. Because she understands that she needs to do something, but she complains that she gets maybe two or three customers a week. Mm. She can't stay alive that way. She's not going to stay there. But yet she could not not see herself, even if it was going to cost her $10 more a month, she could not see herself taking on another bill because she was so afraid of where she was currently. Mm. Well, you asked about what qualifies a business owner to be in pop-up, and our application process is electronic. Ah. And if there's struggles in getting uh, an application filled electronically or submitted electronically, it, it does kind of throw up a red flag for us. Mm-hmm. There could be issues uh, of, of technology, but at the same time, if they're not at that very basic level, mm-hmm. we can we consider that a concern in terms yeah. of their long-term success. And the fact of the matter is, as the part of our pop-up evaluation process, we know what properties have foot traffic, Mm -hmm. and those that do not. Mm -hmm. So if a particular business applies for a property where there is minimal foot traffic, we have to make an assessment. Mm -hmm. Do they have a website? Is it optimized? How much revenue are they generating from their website? Because the location they want to be at has minimal traffic. So the importance of having a website, even a passive website to generate revenue, or to access people that you can't reach because you're a sole proprietor, I can't, I can't highlight how important that yeah, is. Yeah, absolutely. You're absolutely right, and it's I great to hear it. He's sweating now. He's <laughs> and he's sitting up. He's actually <laughs> sitting forward, so I think he really means what he says. Um, <laughs> well, and, and give, some, give them some information about how they can get you know, involved with Pop-Up. You know, give them a website, a telephone number to reach you guys. And then I'm going to talk about the event that you have coming up on the 19th. Okay, well, our, our website for Pop-Up is uh, www.dedo, D-E-D-O, dot delaware dot gov backslash pop up p o p u p now our application process is over for this year but they can certainly inquire uh, about the program or they can uh, uh, email me diane laird at uh, state dot d e dot u s spell your name so that they can uh, get that right d i a n e dot laird l a i r d at state dot d e dot u s Okay. And we'll be glad to put them on our mailing list to find out not only about pop-up, but about any of our entrepreneurial training programs and downtown programs. Sounds great. Ken, why don't you give them some contact information for you as well? You can contact me also at Dito. My phone number is 302-577-8477. And my email address is kenneth.r.anderson at state.de.us. You guys make that real confusing, but it's okay. <laughs> well, I'm going to have well, the easiest thing is the phone number. The phone number is the easiest. <laughs> Google Ken Anderson. Okay. You're <laughs> absolutely right. I did, actually. I did Google you. I did. I think you, did you have glasses on, I think, in that yes, picture? Yes, I had a goatee. Probably. I thought there was something yeah. else going on there. Yeah. You see, you look a little different. Yeah, look you know, a little younger. See no there? Okay. (laughs) I love it. I love it. So let me, um, let's go into the event uh, and talk about that, what that's all about. Mm -hmm. Um, It is a free event. And what is it, what is it called? Uh, It is called Recruiting and Retaining Downtown Businesses. Okay. It's a workshop. It's actually a a business development workshop. It's going to be in Milton uh, on Thursday, September 19th. And, you know, one Downtowns, revitalized downtowns, uh, people often look at the streetscape and say, well, this has been a revitalized downtown. But we consider the metric for a successfully revitalized downtown to be a mix of good, appropriate, and sustainable businesses. Mm -hmm. And they're meeting community needs, and they're meeting uh, needs of or desires of tourists and other destination shoppers. So uh, we want to empower our downtown business uh, revitalization specialists and representatives and those who are interested in the topic. We want to empower them with knowledge about how to recruit businesses and also how to retain those that have already made an investment Mm -hmm. in the downtown. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things in a a proposal that I put together when I first met with Don McGinley, um, because I took a look as an outsider. I mean, he said that was very fresh, a fresh view, but I found I even shared that with. Carrie, 
Mm-hmm. Carrie Gray. Yeah, Carrie Gray. And she said, you know, it's funny that you haven't been here, but you've kind of hit, put, hit the nail on the head in terms of the things that we're still having some issues with. Mm-hmm. And I think, again, it gets back to all of these people collaborating and working through these issues together in order to move it yet further, because a lot has been done, but there's still a lot of challenges. And I don't know where we are in terms of addressing some of those challenges right now, but I, I know that the more that we talk about it and we start to work on some plans together, I think that that'll make a difference and change the quality of life for an awful lot of people in the entire area. Sure. Um, tell us, uh, uh, the, you have a speaker that's yeah, going to be at the Yeah, Rick Farrell is the principal of uh, Retail Market Answers LLC. He's actually Wilmington-based, and we've worked together over a number of years uh, with downtown Delaware. And... Um, he he has a background in retail recruitment for mall mm-hmm. at, at the uh, uh, Baltimore Inner Harbor in Colorado at Cherry Hill Mall when it was brand new, and he has transferred those skills to just the downtown marketplace, mm-hmm. and so uh, he can do market studies and and leakage studies. What kinds of businesses would be successful in an area mm-hmm. but are not there? Where have people shopped previously? Say the last six, eight, ten months, and you know, to, to kind of look at what history shows could be potentially successful in the downtown. So is he working as a consultant with Dito to, to yes. kind of put together an analysis like that? or has well, an ana- He works with the towns. Okay. He works with the you. towns on an individual basis, helps mm-hmm. them to do some uh, uh, retail studies mm-hmm. and, um, you know, look at the marketplace, see, see what's, what are the opportunities. He also helps them develop building and business inventories. Mm-hmm. so that uh, they can begin to get to know each property. Who owns it? What's the square footage? What kind of maintenance issues are there? Mm-hmm. What is the rent? Mm-hmm. Also to be in business um, or in, in, in relationship with the current business owners to get a sense about how they're doing. Mm-hmm. Are, they, are they successful? Are they needing help? Are they going to be going out of business and we're going to have an empty, empty parcel to fill soon? So it's about really getting a good handle on every parcel in the in your downtown, mm-hmm. so that you can begin to guide the process. Yeah, the um, you know they they always say there's nothing new in the world, you know, and and in terms of replicating past successes in other cities, do you know or did you guys participate in anything where you visited places like Baltimore? I know. Um, and I had a list of others, Denver, San Diego, Chattanooga, Tennessee, where they went through this whole revitalization process themselves and are, are relatively successful still uh, in their thriving downtowns. Did we visit um, these places and try to take some lessons from that and bring it back here? Or are we trying to, re- and I hope I'm not asking something that, <laughs> that you don't have an answer to, but, or did we try to recreate the wheel, so to speak? Well, we base our... Um our best practices off of the Main Street model. Okay. And Main Street is a nationally known and nationally used, actually international, mm-hmm. uh, program of downtown revitalization. And so the principles, I think, have typically been developed. It's the implementation. Yeah. It's the customization, and it's the, the manpower that mm-hmm. is needed to get, you know, to, to be armed to, to, to make uh, change and to, um, to address the needs. Um, you know, each of our Main Street programs, there are seven in the state, each of those have a paid program manager to guide the efforts. And, you know, downtowns are not like malls in that a mall has a paid program manager and, and a lawyer and, um, you know, people to make sure the grounds are in order and that there mm-hmm. are businesses coming in, mm-hmm. collecting the rent. And we don't have that in downtowns because they're owned by many different uh, people. Mm-hmm. And so it's a different kind of a challenge. But, yeah, we visit uh, cities across the country through our Main Street conferences and coordinator meetings, um, and we pick up a lot of um, tips and and tools, Mm -hmm. best practices. I wouldn't say there's one town that has, you know, gone the gamut, although I'm sure they exist. But, Mm -hmm. you know, we try to to bring the best practices and, and incorporate them in the state. Okay. So what do you see as our, our still to conquer challenges? And let's say downtown Wilmington, because I live here, so I have a, a vested interest in knowing what, what we need to still do and how we can get those things done. Mm-hmm. Well, it's ongoing partnerships. Mm-hmm. You know, there, there are not, not only funds are needed, but philosophical support mm-hmm. and simply manpower. So um, amassing volunteers for short-term projects is always critical. And, mm-hmm. and you know, if you're breathing, there's, there's a job <laughs> for you. And so uh, in Wilmington, it's contacting Downtown Visions or mm-hmm. um, Will Minster uh, of uh, Main Street Wilmington 
And if you say, look, I have two hours a month I'd like to commit, or 20 hours a month, he can put you on a task. You'll you'll find it meaningful mm -hmm. and valuable, and, and that's really what yeah. makes the difference. I personally have also met with Will several times, and mm -hmm. I find him to be a wealth of knowledge, very supportive. Mm -hmm. You know, he'll say, wow, that's a great idea, Carolyn. But, like, one of the ideas I had was, and, and this is something that I did in Tampa, and this was an effort for us to start to promote more of the black businesses to get more. that We had a, a lot more black businesses than I even knew existed, and I, I assumed I was not alone because we would fill buses with people. We would meet at a, at a location, and initially we started with one bus, and then we would take a tour on a Saturday and go from business to business to business. The businesses had to cough up $20, uh, $200 to have a stop there, but we were bringing 60 to 80 customers. Wow. Um, what we found after that, though, was that they were not able to handle that many customers at one time. Um, so a lot of the customers were being a little turned off because of the customer service. So then we started holding workshops. Okay, now this is how you deal with, you know, an irate customer. This is what you do when you have too many. You know, how do you staff for the fact that we're bringing 60 people to your store? Um, so we found other issues. But we thought we were doing a great job of just, hey, here, here's business for you. Um, not everyone purchased, but what they did find is that there was a lot of repeat in that. So I said, well, we could do something similar to that for the various areas and bus people in for a, I don't know what you want to call it, a super Saturday. I don't know what you want to call it, but have different locations outside of the city, bring them in, and then we'll go somewhere and we'll have some kind of event where you can have get food and then bus them back out and they get in their cars and drive on their merry way. Hopefully that would uh, dispel some of the perceptions because still there are the perceptions of crime, you know, for the city. The parking issue, you know, now you're on a bus, you don't have to worry about parking. We're bringing you in to go shopping, you know. And then that begins the process of getting them acclimated to the new downtown Wilmington. Um, and it kind of changes some of those perceptions. So, I, I think initiatives like that are very, very important for the city of Wilmington, creating that kind of activity, getting more people engaged in the downtown and the businesses, mm -hmm. um, giving those existing business owners a reason to stay open mm -hmm. beyond 5 o'clock and to be open on weekends. Yes, My please. goodness, yeah. that's really the nexus for where we have to go. Right. And I would just give some uh, credit to the pop-up program mm -hmm. because it has had some unintended consequences, which are very, very positive in the city of Wilmington. <laughs> We've seen businesses, and I would suggest they're minority-owned businesses, mm -hmm. um, uh, populate as a part of responding to this process that, frankly, we didn't know exists and maybe yeah. City of Wilmington didn't know yeah. exists. Yeah. So Will Minster now has this um, class of businesses, good businesses, that he can now find locations for. They may not be part of the pop-up program, right. but they we have the opportunity to form a cluster of retail businesses yes. that have been re responsive to this program yeah. that we didn't know about before. That's great. Yeah, and to go along with your bus idea, there have been some uh, cash mobs or flash mobs, you might call them, mm -hmm. in the downtown where they select a business secretly and you show up to some common point and then it's announced that, you know, whatever business is getting mm -hmm. the, the cash mob. And, they, and that business is encouraged to have a $10 or Twenty dollar item, mm -hmm. uh, or several of them, so that if people want to show their support and pay right. ten dollars or twenty right. to get an item, so mm -hmm. that and then that was has been followed by uh, kind of a meet and greet or a, or a little networking hour after that at Chelsea Tavern or, mm -hmm. or one of the other taverns mm -hmm. uh, to kind of celebrate that win. Yeah, and that's kind of a similar idea. It is, yeah, because you're you're at least business. you're creating critical mass. It may be temporary, you know, for that moment, but at least, you know, this is something, I mean, I can't tell you how many businesses I personally, and I thought I knew most of the businesses. I was a radio personality down there. I helped promote a lot of the businesses, but we would find all of these off the beaten path businesses um, that were doing okay. They were little neighborhood businesses. And when we started bringing, bus you know, bringing uh, consumers through, they were able to develop a, a better and a stronger customer base. So. Um, I'd like to see similar things like that, you know, begin to happen here. You know, of course, when I come out with ideas, even sitting down with Ellen Herbert at uh, SBA, I had like three or four other, other ideas. And she said, well, great, Carolyn, go ahead and do that. Uh, and I right. said, yeah, I, I'm sure. trying to get you guys to kind of help out with this. But, you know, there's there's an awful lot of ideas, I think, out there. And the resources are limited. Um, but I, again, I always like to say if we, you know, we have individual successes, but our collective strength is much greater. So we need to work towards that end in order to make a difference. And, and I think that I, I see it happening. I just would like to see more of it. And, 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 and the promotion of those programs, I think, 
could use a little bit more help because you don't always know about what's going on. I think you're a lot right, of times. and that's why it's important to have short-term wins, small-scale wins, like pop-up. That's a short-term win. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the longer-term wins, which are, like I said, blocks of buildings improved or, or business, new businesses in space, in the mm -hmm. space. But, mm -hmm. yeah, it's very important to have that publicity as well. We, we often see so much in the, in the newspaper that is not positive, but there's yeah, an awful lot right. of positive to report. That's good. Well, I'm going to give you an opportunity to give some last thoughts and contact information one more time slowly so that people can call you, email you, what have you. Okay. My name again, Diane Laird, D-I-A-N-E dot Laird, L-A-I-R-D at state dot D-E dot U-S. We'd love to hear from you if you are a downtown business owner or would like to be. Or if you're someone just interested in, in downtown revitalization anywhere throughout the state, uh, we would love to uh, have your name and email address. We'll put you on our mailing list and, and invite you to our training sessions and, and any kind of opportunities for small business and downtown development. Okay. And I'm Ken Anderson. You can contact me at 302-577-8477. If you have a business, if you're an entrepreneur, if you're an innovator and you're just thinking about starting a business or you want to grow your existing business, we offer free one-on-one -on -one consulting. We can direct you to the resources that are currently available in this state to take your business to the next level. So please stop by Deedle, Carville State Building, 10th floor, and pay us a call. Well, that's going to do it for this edition of Evolution Strategies. Hopefully we've been able to impart some information to you that's useful. Uh, next week, next Sunday at 1 p.m., we'll be on again, and we'll be talking about digital divide and how we can help you take advantage of digital opportunities, just like we were already talking about today. It leads right into that. Um, you know, be well, and uh, we'll talk to you next week.